In this video, we are going to talk about the process of meiosis which occurs in specialized cells known as germ cells and these cells are found in the male and female reproductive organs. In humans, the male reproductive organ is the testes and the female reproductive organ is the ovaries. It is in these where these germ cells are present and these germ cells are the only cells in the body capable of undergoing meiosis. Recall that each cell has 46 chromosomes arranged as 23 pairs of chromosomes. So even germ cells begin with 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs. Because these cells have 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs, they are diploid. What happens at the end of sexual reproduction? The male and female gametes fuse to form the zygote. But the gametes that fuse are haploid which then give rise to a diploid zygote. How are those haploid cells produced? That is by the process of meiosis. So these 46 chromosome containing germ cells undergo meiosis and produce 4 cells of 23 chromosomes each. And now the ploidy of these cells is haploid. But where did this extra 2 sets of chromosomes come from? Because if there are 23 pairs and if it is splitting to become haploid, it should be 2 cells of 23 chromosomes, right? Where did those additional 2 sets come from? We will learn about that in just a while. Now, because meiosis is such a complicated process, it is split in 2 stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. In this video, we are going to talk about meiosis 1. We will tackle meiosis 2 in a different video. Before we begin with the stages in meiosis 1, let's recall how the cell looks like in interface. Remember that in interface, DNA exists in the form of chromatin and the centrosomes are present. Each cell has only one centrosome that is made up of two centrioles. The nuclear membrane is still intact. The cell has not begun to undergo meiosis yet. Before it can undergo cell division, be it mitosis or meiosis, the cell has to replicate its DNA and that happens in the S phase of the cell cycle. So at the end of S phase, you have replicated DNA and replicated centrosomes as well. So if this one squiggly line is chromatin, then this is replicated chromatin because you see two squiggly lines. Now this answers the question on how four cells containing 23 chromosomes each can be formed at the end of meiosis because the DNA has been replicated here. So at the end of meiosis, this chromosome can go to one cell and this can go to another cell. This can go to one cell and this can go to another cell. That way the cell goes from diploid to haploid. So now the cell decides, okay, I will undergo meiosis. And it begins with prophase 1, continues to metaphase 1, goes on to anaphase 1 and then ends in telophase 1 after which cytokinesis also follows. Because these phases are part of meiosis 1, they are also labeled as 1, prophase 1, metaphase 1, etc. Let's begin with prophase 1, which is quite a long phase and it is in turn made up of several subphases. And those subphases are leptotene, zygotene, pachytene, diplotene, and diakinesis. Now, what happens as leptotene begins is that the chromatin begins to condense to form chromosomes. So by the end of leptotene, chromatin has fully condensed to form chromosomes and each chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids. Remember because DNA has replicated, each chromosome contains two sister chromatids attached at the centromere. The centrosomes which were initially close to each other in the cell begin their journey towards opposite poles of the cell. In the next stage that is zygotene, homologous chromosomes begin to pair up. Now, what are homologous chromosomes? Homologous chromosomes are chromosomes that have genes in the same region, same location and you have inherited one from your father and one from your mother. So, this chromosome is from your father and if this is from your mother, then these two are homologous chromosomes because they have genes at the same location and they are roughly of the same size as well. So, what happens in zygotene is that the homologous chromosomes begin to pair up. And by the end of zygotene, the homologous chromosomes have fully paired up and this pair is known as tetrad because this contains four chromatids, right? It's known as a tetrad. Now, why is this tetrad formation important? Because of something that happens in the pachytene stage, which is chromosomal crossing over or chromosomal recombination. 
while we have sister chromatids which is the same chromosome that has been replicated there is something called non sister chromatids the other two chromatids in a homologous pair of chromosome is a non sister chromatid so if these two green chromatids are sister chromatids then one green and one pink are non sister chromatids but they still belong to the same homologous pair that's why they have paired up here and it is between these two non sister chromatids that crossing over or recombination takes place if you want to learn more about chromosomal recombination check out our video on the same topic So as packetin ends recombination has fully taken place and as diplotin begins this tetrad which is also known as the synaptonemal complex this begins to dissolve or separate and these chromosomes are attached to each other at only the sites of recombination and those sites of recombination are known as chiasmata as diplotin ends and diakinesis progresses the chiasmata fully disappears and the homologous chromosomes separate now here you can see how the recombination has happened initially this was fully green right now it has bits of pink initially this was fully pink and now it has bits of green so at the end of diakinesis that chiasmata disappears and the homologous chromosomes separate and the nuclear membrane also begins to dissolve at this stage the centrosomes have fully moved to opposite poles of the cell and they begin to radiate microtubules so as prophase 1 ends the nuclear membrane has fully dissolved and as metaphase progresses the homologous chromosomes have arranged at the center of the cell known as the metaphase plate they are arranged at the center of the cell microtubules come and attach at the kinetochore of each homologous chromosome this microtubule from this side comes and attaches to this homologous chromosome this microtubule from this side comes and attaches to this homologous chromosome as anaphase happens the homologous chromosomes separate so the microtubules attached to the kinetochores they begin to pull the homologous chromosomes apart so these two were one pair and these two were one pair now this pair separates and this pair separates so that's what happens in anaphase the homologous chromosomes separate they are still made up of two sister chromatids this is two sister chromatids but the homologous pair will separate telophase 1 follows anaphase 1 and in telophase 1 the homologous chromosomes are fully separated and around them a nuclear membrane forms again as cytokinesis follows telophase 1 the daughter cells are fully formed and each daughter cell now has one of the homologous pair now unlike after mitosis these chromosomes do not fully decondense to form chromatin again that's because they still have to undergo meiosis 2 remember there's still one whole stage left so for that they undergo partial decondensation but by the time meiosis 2 happens they have formed chromosomes again so we'll end here at the end of telophase 1 and we'll pick up exactly where we left off in the video for meiosis 2